Well, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. My name is Christy Iwuchuku, a.k.a. Lady Christy, CEO and founder of Chosen Path Global, helping women find your voice, speak up and speak out and gain confidence. And today, I am thrilled to be joined by my friend, Gary McKenzie. Gary is the past president of the National Speakers Association in here in Northern California. And uh, he is also a public speaking coach, helping individuals to present effectively, connecting with their audience. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have been doing the same presentation, the same boring presentation without any impact, get your pen and paper ready because in within the next one hour, he is going to uh, impart his nuggets of change on giving effective presentation. Please help me welcome Gary McKenzie. Ah, Christy, Gary. thank you. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be on your program. Thank you. Wow, you and I met, uh, we met at a networking event at Katrina, Katrina's uh, Sowers event, correct? Correct, in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. In Sacramento, and then we connected again back in Public Speakers Association Conference in Las Vegas. This yes, is, we did. Yes, it was an awesome event indeed. So I thank you. I don't take our time um, uh, lightly. I know you could have been somewhere else doing what you do best, which is helping individuals, um, teaching individuals on how to present effectively. So welcome and thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I, um, I know yeah, the, you've been in Toastmasters and you've been in Toastmasters as an other speaking organization for quite a long time. Yes. Oftentimes as we, as we look at people who has made it in whatever business that they are, we always think that um, it's easy. And sometimes it can even get to an extent of scaring us that we don't want to do it. But I've always said that behind every successful person, there's always a journey that got them there. So take us back to where it all began for you. How did you get here? Oh, Christy, that's a great question. Uh, thank you for asking that. And Christy, people quite often see me today and say, gee, you must have always been outgoing and a speaker. And I thought, no, no. It really all happened to me when I was 23 years old, attending college, and the, the critical factor, the event, was, if you can picture this, it's a Friday afternoon, I've just finished a US history class in college, and I'm really unhappy with me. I'm unhappy because I'm shy, I'm unhappy just because I don't have self-confidence. And Christy, we were walking out of that class and feeling compelled, I mean compelled, that I should drive across town to a bookstore, a bookstore I rarely went to. And I had no idea why, but I just felt compelled. So finally, I drove across town. And there in front of the bookstore was a parking place. So I parked my car, stepped into the bookstore, thinking, why am I here? And I can remember, I could hear kind of the muffled sounds of a few other people talking smelled like kind of like a used bookstore and begin to walk through these narrow aisles just packed with books thinking why am i here mm. and i spotted this book it had a red binding on it and i took that book off the shelf and i looked at read the back of it and it promised that within that book it could solve my problems and i thought wow this is what i need and yet christy i was so shy that I put the book back on the shelf because I thought only people that buy this book have a problem and I didn't want the cashier to know I had a problem so I actually left the building without the book I remember standing outside that store and hearing this little voice saying Gary you mean you're gonna let someone that you don't know that you'll probably never see again keep you from buying this book that promises to change your life and I thought, well, no, I walked right back in that bookstore, picked that book up, went up to the cashier. Did you picture this? I put the book down, face down, because I didn't want her to read the title. And she flipped the book up to get the price. 
as if she was saying to the world, hey, look, this guy's got a problem, even though I was the only person in the, I was the only person there. So anyway, I purchased the book, begin to read it, and my goodness, it truly had promises, and I begin to act on those promises and begin to change my life. And the next book I purchased at that same bookstore was Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends, Influence People. And in that book, there was a statement, and this may not be the quite the right verbiage, but this is how I remember it. It said the shortcut to distinction is through public speaking. Well, I wanted to be distinct. I was looking for that, but not public speaking. So, no, there's got to be another way. And for 20 years, 20 years, I didn't act on that, even though I could hear this little voice saying, Gary, the shortcut to distinction is through public speaking. And finally, finally, after 20 years, uh, I've got to act on this. I signed up for a Dale Carnegie class. I took that class and I began to break out of my shell. And so I kind of liked public speaking. And I, went, I did well enough that the Dale Carnegie representative invited me to come back for the next three years. I was a teaching assistant for their program. It was great. And there I was introduced to Toastmasters, which helped me develop my skills, which led to being introduced to the National Speakers Association. And I continued to work at developing presentation skills and how to connect with the audience. And one day there I was on stage being introduced as the president of the National Speakers Association of Northern California. So that's that quick overview of my journey. Wow. Thank you for that. You know, there's, um, I always believe that sometimes we're geared into the direction to do certain things, but sometimes we don't really know why, but it yes. really, um, we'll find out why. And that was it in your case. I know for me, when I joined Toastmasters, I wasn't quite sure. I just knew that a friend invited me to come to a meeting and, um, the rest was history. And um, I want to pick it up on what you just said about uh, being scared of public speaking. As a new speaker, I know new speakers always get nervous. I know it was for me when I first joined Toastmasters, four to six minutes, which is normally the first assignment to give you, um, look like uh, one hour. I barely made it to four minutes. Yes. And um, what do you think? are the reasons that speakers get nervous whenever they are called up to speak? No. I think the bottom line is just fear of making, of being laughed at, fear of, of uh, yeah, just, just, I wouldn't call it rejection, but maybe it's just fear of being laughed at, that you, that you make a mistake and the people laugh at you. I think, I think that's a lot of it right there, just, just that fear. Yeah, it's, um, and as you get used to speaking often, you learn how to control uh, the butterflies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, definitely. The more you speak, the better you, you get and learn mm -hmm. to control the butterflies. So thank you for that. So what can you tell us about um, the use, the proper use of stage? You know, sometimes you, give, you see speakers giving presentation. It's almost like they are held hostage right there in front of the room. What can you tell us about the proper use of the stage? Okay. Now, and, and I have a, a, I have a process I go through, and, and I teach this in my classes, whether it's an online class or in my one-to-one -one coaching, on how to overcome your fear and how to connect with your audience. And the, the very first thing that I recommend to individuals is plan on arriving early. And by arriving early, I mean, get there an hour early. That's what my coaches have told me, and I've discovered it works. So arrive at wherever you're going to speak at least an hour early. And then get comfortable with the room. Go in the room, set your material up. If you're using PowerPoint, get it set up. Make sure it's working. And then walk around the room, set in the different corners of the room, 
and get a sense of what the audience is going to see, and then get comfortable on the stage. And I strongly recommend, and this is what I do every time, I practice walking onto the stage and finding that power position, which is usually right in the middle of the stage up front. I practice standing there, envisioning my audience, and I practice my opening statement. And I do this a number of times. And I understand where I'm going to be seated in the room or standing in the room, so when I'm introduced, I can, I'm ready to come on stage. And Christy, after I've done all that, got comfortable with the room, now, now people are beginning, the guests are beginning to arrive. And I recommend, recommend, and this is what I do, I don't hide from the guests. I stand at the door, and I, as they walk through, you know, they step into the meeting room, they're kind of looking around, I extend my hand and say, hi, welcome, glad you're here. And most people, oh, thank you, and they will go on and find their seat. Once in a while, someone will ask me, oh, are, are you new or are you, are you the speaker? And my answer is, well, I'm the, I'm the entertainment. <laughs> yeah, if, it's the, if it's a breakfast meeting or lunch or after dinner, I just, well, I'm the, I'm the uh, entertainment. I, I hope you enjoy my speech. And, and they always say, oh, you'll do fine. We'll like it. The beauty of this is I've now shaken hands with a lot of the people, touched them, had a brief conversation. But they're kind of like my, made them friends. So it helps reduce the nervousness. Now, the butterflies are still there, but this just helps, as you said earlier, get them flying in formation. So that's <laughs> so they're, they're lined up as opposed to just going all over the place. But that's the process I go through every time, and that's the process I teach. Thank you. And I want to follow up on that, what you said, and ask you, one of the problems that uh, speakers have is getting invited back. So what can you share with us are the techniques for an effective presentation so that we keep getting invited back every time. Mm. And that's a, that's a two-part process, easily. One, you've been invited for a reason. So I always make sure that I talk with the meeting planner or the person that's invited me. I've talked to them early asking, what, what results? What, what results? How do you want my speech to change your audience? So I make sure that I understand what they want. And so I plan on giving, giving that to, to them. But then the audience is the most important part. And so I really work at how do you connect with the audience, engage them, and keep them engaged in your presentation all the way through. So when it's done, they're, when you're finished, they give you a round of applause. They're excited. And if they're excited, the meeting planner is excited because you made them look good. And, and then I always, I always follow up with the meeting planner or the person that brought me in just to make sure that I connected. And I let them know that I would like to be, in, if I did a good job, I'd like to be invited back. And then, then I maintain contact maybe quarterly or at least every six months. I like to send a note, something to that meeting planner just saying, hey, I'm still here. So that's, that's the process that works well. All right, all right. Um, um, I'm sure you. How long have you been? How long have you been a public speaking coach? How long have you been doing that? I have been doing this for about seven years now. About seven years. Mm -hmm. So, what have you seen that is the reason, or what will happen if a speaker is not prepared? Mm. Well, if they're not prepared, first of all, those butterflies are just flying all over. <laughs> but what happens when they prepare, not prepared, and they take this and they're introduced, they don't have a good opening, so they don't immediately grab the attention of the audience. And you have to remember the audience, they're, they're thinking about a lot of things. So you have to, where a speaker's not prepared, they do not grab the audience's attention. They do not have a compelling message 
and they don't have a good close. And so in the process, they're not making eye contact with the audience. They quite often get nervous, and so they're pacing back and forth on the stage. And the audience is getting nervous. I mean, that pacing breaks their concentration. And pretty soon they become aware that, well, this speaker really didn't prepare to talk to us. And, and, and when, I, when I encounter a speaker like that, here's my thought. That speaker didn't value my time enough to prepare to give me useful information. That's my thought. And I never, I personally never want to leave that with my audience. But that's where I see people that do not prepare. They just think, well, I know my material. I, I can just wing it. And, and it's very obvious to the audience that they are winging it. They're not making that headway. Now, um, what have you seen is the most problem that uh, new speakers have? Mm. You know, the, the, the problem I see new speakers having, you know, here again, it's probably three, probably three parts, three stages. But that first one is they're just not quite sure how to open their talk. And they feel they're, that uh, they're not, they're going to lose their place. And so they try to memorize the speech. And when they try to memorize their speech, it becomes clear that they're just regurgitating what they, what they memorized. And if they lose their place, oh my goodness. If they're working from a memorized speech and they lose their place, all of a sudden they don't know where they, where they are or what to say. And while the audience is for you, they want to see you succeed. If you stumble too long, then they lose interest. So, so I see the beginning speaker quite often trying to uh, memorize their speech or want to read it. Either way, that they do not make good contact. The other issue I see with, with new speakers is besides not having a strong opening is they don't have transitions in their story, in their talk. They've got to move from, ish, from story to story. They do not have nice transitions. And then at the end, at the end, they, we always need a call to action because we want to be thinking what we want our audience to know, think, or do as a result of hearing us. And they're not, they don't really have a call to action or if they do, it's so muddled, the audience thinks, what am I supposed to do with this information? So those are the, uh, those are some of the basics that I see the new speaker struggling with, those three areas. Thank you. And also, um, sometimes people who have presenters or speakers have challenges, especially again, new speakers, finding topics to talk about. How can we make it easier or what will be the tips to make it a little bit easier for them finding top subjects, topics to talk about during the presentation? No. And you know, to find the uh, topic, and, and my, my recommendation is don't try to find that hot topic. Find that topic that resonates with you. And I, I've discovered that I have, I have people go through a, called a discovery process. Uh, it's a check sheet and we look at what jobs what what jobs have you had over your lifetime that you really liked so we didn't worry about did you really like it what jobs did you have whether you were paid or not and what what did you like and what did you learn so begin to look at that then we do the same thing for their hobbies and then we ask what are you passionate about and quite often by going through that we'll begin to uncover what their what their real where they are an expert, what they're really interested in, and their passion. And then we say, okay, let's, let's marry these. Let's put these together. So we're talking about something that, that you're an expert in. Maybe it's something you totally overlooked because it's so easy to you. You think, oh, that's just common knowledge. And yet it's not. People need your knowledge. And if you can take that and find their passion, 
if they're passionate about, then, then we start working on those initial speeches because it's so much easier to prepare for a speech if it's an area you feel that you're expert in, or at least knowledgeable, and if you're passionate. Passion goes a long, long way. Okay. Thank you, Gary. And, um, you know, I think you were referring to if you are just giving a regular speech, but if someone invites you to speak to their organization, what do you think are the most important things to pay attention to? Hmm. Yeah, when you're invited to speak to an organization, besides earlier, as I mentioned, you find out why are they inviting you? Because you're the change agent. They want, they want you to change their audience. Find out the why. And then spend some time, go back and look at their website. See who the other speakers have, they've had, how they presented. And then do some research. Find out something about the organization, what their mission is, their vision. Because that helps arm you. Uh, so when you, when you make your presentation, you've got that background. You're, you're not just walking in cold. You know something about that organization. So that, that helps a whole lot right there. Just Thank you, Gary. You really dropped a lot of nuggets today in terms of being able to present effectively. So what, in essence, can you tell us about the importance of connecting with your audience? Oh, if you want to be invited back, and you want your audience to, to leave knowing something or as a result of your speech, you have to connect. And, and there again, that's a, a process. And so when I mentioned earlier about getting comfortable on the stage, I think if, if we're going to be telling stories, and most of us have stories, if we're going to be effective and connect with our audience, because people like stories, that's what they remember. So you, you determine where on the stage you're going to tell your various stories. It, it's called anchoring in neuro-linguistic programming. They call this anchoring, but it works. So you determine where you're going to be on stage when you're telling a certain story and anchor that story there. And the reason that's important is if you're telling your story, you've told a story, you went on to tell something else, and then you come back to the stage and you're standing at the same spot where you told an earlier story and you start telling a new story, your audience is saying, there, there's something doesn't connect there. You're, conf you're conflicting your audience. So I always recommend use your stage, tell your story from different places on the stage. And, and remember too, that we read from left to right. So if you're asking your audience to come back in time with you, you as the speaker are moving to your right. Because from your audience's point of view, you're moving to the left, you're going back in time. If you're going forward, you as the speaker are moving to your left, you're going forward. So you keep those, those are just subtleties, however they work. And then really work on eye contact. And eye contact, start off looking at the people in the back of the room. You talk to the people in the back of the room first, make a statement. Then maybe you look to the people on the right, make a statement, then perhaps to the left, that you're not just scanning the room or looking over the heads of your audience. You're actually looking at a, at a person or a group of individuals making your statement. And you smile. You remember to smile. because you, <laughs> That way you're, you're happy. You're having fun. You're connecting. Uh, so use the stage. Make eye contact. And it's a formula. I, I learned this from Craig Valentine, who's one of the world champions of public speaking. And it says, look to one, speak to all. So that means, like, if we are an audience, and you're in the audience, I might be looking at you, Christy, and making a statement. Say, say, Christy, do you. I'm using the word you. But yet, the whole audience feels encompassed by that. So I recommend to people, do their best not to say, how many of you have? Say, have you? And by you, make it real personal. And, and work on the eye contact, vocal variety, of course, and how you use the stage. And all those things are just critical 
for making contact with your audience. And we had one more, one more item here. And I, this is from tr a training, but we need to give our audience something to do. And remember our audience members, there are people there that are visual, they're kinesthetic and auditory. So for the kinesthetic learner, we want to let's probably have them write something down. They're doing something. Uh, for your visual learner, it's, it's nice to have a prop or, or use visual language like, can you see? And your auditory learner, can you use the word hear? Look at, look at words. In fact, there's lists of words that are just designed for the visual learner, the auditory learner, and the kinesthetic learner. And you get those into your, in your uh, presentation. So you're connecting with all those audience members. And then don't be afraid from now, time to time, if it's appropriate and, you, and you've got a message to turn to your neighbor and say, turn to your neighbor, give him a high five. And turn to your other neighbor, give him a high five and say, this is really interesting. It's gotta be appropriate, but yet it gives people something to do. So there's some of the things I like to talk about and encourage speakers to do. Awesome, awesome. So as we come to the end of our interview, what are the takeaways? Just if you can share with our audience three takeaways on how to be an effective presenter. Okay, my my three takeaways. You know, number number one, certainly you you practice and you rehearse. Absolutely, you don't memorize your speech, but you practice and rehearse. If you're going to memorize anything. Memorize maybe the first 45 seconds or one minute of your opening. Have that down. Because once you're on stage speaking and get into your talk, the nerves go away and you feel more comfortable. And the other is memorize your clothes. You have a call to action. And you, and you want one specific call to action. Because people need that next step. And if you give them two or three things to do, they'll think, well, which one's right? No, give them one clear next step so those are those are the things and then practice eye contact and smiling practice your eye contact with your audience and smiling don't be don't be afraid to look at your audience and smile be approachable be friendly be open and oh and be the same person on stage as you're off stage don't have one persona for the stage and then afterwards hide from your audience you know be open friendly all the time both on stage and off stage be that same person those are the those are the three uh, takeaways that i would hope my audience is, is picking up and that's the counsel that i would certainly give awesome so uh gary how can our audience get in touch with you if they want to work with you can you give out your information, contact information for them to contact you. No, oh, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Yes, the best way is to go to my website, which is GaryMcKenzie.com. And you can see how McKenzie spelled here, but let me spell it for you just in case it's an unusual spelling. So it's Gary McKenzie. <laughs> McKenzie spelling is M-C-K-I-N. S E Y dot com. And when you're there, there's a, a contact form. Just fill it in and just write the heard you on Christie's program. I'll be glad to get back with them and talk talk with them about their business, their speaking, how to make contact. This is one of the areas I'm passionate about. I love to talk to people about developing their speaking skills and building their speaking business. So thank you for asking. Well, thank you so much. I know that you really have given us a lot of information and uh, hopefully our audience can take advantage of your time to coach and find out uh, how you can help them. And I uh, appreciate you. And uh, hopefully I can get you back to the program again. And um, thank you so much. Thank you. I'd love to be on your, your guest again. Thank you. Bye-bye now. <laughs>